talking about the discussion here um, uh, that Ula, Ula mentions on the Gemara about the argument of Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis, does it apply when the brachas are different brachas? Do we then still give preference to either chaviv, something that you cherish more, or the seven species? Do we give preference to them even when they're different brachas? Now, uh, we did have a few questions uh, yesterday, and one of them was, uh, we had, or, or yesterday and, and other days, one of them was about the fruits from Eretz Yisrael. Uh, does it apply to uh, eating in them, them in Eretz Yisrael or not? Ezra had asked this question. Um, so I, I uh, just, I looked it up. So the, the uh, Seder Berchas Hanenen, which is uh, authored by the Alter Rebbe, he wrote a uh, like a summary of the laws of brachas. And in chapter one, he brings that Bibracha Mi'ain Shalosh, in the uh, bracha, the after blessing of the fruits of the seven species, you end in Chutzah La'aret, Al Ha'aret Bi'al Ha'peiros, You you conclude al ha'aret the al ha'peiros in chutz la'aret. Now uve eretz yisrael and in eretz yisrael al ha'aret the al peiros teha. In eretz yisrael you say this special ending is a little different to uh, al ha'aret and on peiros teha its fruits because you're in Israel. The afilu peiros eretz yisrael shiatu chutz la'aret. The chutzlarets, even the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, if they come to chutzlarets, if they come outside Israel, you conclude al ha'aret v'al seha. So here in America, officially, the I don't know if this is the 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 custom to 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 change the end uh, the the vowels and the the a few letters at the end of the of the bracha. I think people just say al ha'aret v'al ha'peiros, but According to the letter of the law, it seems like it should be al ha'aret the al pedre seha, and that applies whether you're eating Israeli produce in America or you're eating Israeli produce in Israel. Either way, you say the uh, the official letter of the law is to say al ha'aret the al pedre seha. But if you're just eating the seven species, but they grew in Mexico, then you say al ha'aret the al ha'pedre. Now the other question. Um, that I had mentioned, and I just wanted to look it up. It was regarding if a person recites the after blessing on the seven species, does he have, is he exempt from reciting the Bari Nefashe? So the example would be, he ate apples, and he also ate dates. Now on the dates, the after blessing is al ha'et, Vial priyoids and uh, ends with al ha'aret vial ha'peiros. That's the after blessing of dates. The same after blessing as figs or olives, pomegranates. It's all. It would all be the same after blessing. Uh, is this uh, al ha'et vial priyoid? Now the after blessing on apples is the bari nefashis, the one sentence bari nefashis. Now, what happens if you ate both? So the first bracha, the, the bracha before you eat, would be very pre eight, the same bracha. But what about the after blessing? So the after bracha, uh, I mentioned all you have to do is recite one after blessing because it exempts the apples. If you say the after blessing, Allah eight, well, pre eight, it also exempts any other fruits as well. And I just wanted to look it up, so I found it. It's here. It's in uh, also chapter one of the Seder Berchas Hanen. It says if you ate from the seven species and you also ate apples in similar uh, or similar or the like, so you don't have to recite a Berin afterwards on the apples because they are included in the bracha Al Ho'et Bial Pri Ho'et. And uh, then it gets into a more complicated question that if a person ate apples and he drank wine, so in that case, you're saying the bracha at the end 
similar to the Alha H bracha, you're saying the Al Hagefen Bral Priya Gefen. But but uh, he says it doesn't work there because uh, the the bracha the after bracha for apples is not the same after bracha for uh, for wine. It would be in other words the the wine after blessing is not meant to exempt the the apple. And now if you said. Um, uh, then it goes into a case where you ate grapes and you drank wine. In the after blessing, you said al hagefen be al pri hagefen, and grapes could be included in gefen, so it could be considered the al hagefen, or maybe it, uh, the official, the correct bracha is to recite al ho eight bal pri ho eight. But you drank wine as well, and you said al hagefen be al pri hagefen. Does that? exempt the grapes so he says it will exempt the grapes because they are called prehagefen as long as you had in mind to exempt them but if you didn't have in mind to exempt them it wouldn't uh, they wouldn't be included because they're really um uh, supposed to have a eight al eight after blessing and um and therefore you should uh, you should recite the clearly the al ha'it val pri ha'it and the al ha'gefen val pri ha'gefen um, properly. In other words, there's a way to to mention make mention of the fruits and the wine. Now, and the same thing applies in the first bracha. You're not supposed to have in mind the uh, when you recite a bracha on wine to exempt the grapes either, but rather you should give them the uh, the bracha of uh, 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 and um, um, and, uh, and the wine gets the Burpia Geffen. If you did make a mistake or you had in mind you recited Burpia Geffen on the, on the grapes, you actually do fulfill your obligation, believe it or not, because it's Priya Geffen, it's, it's even, even raisins. Uh, you would you would fulfill your obligation of the of your bracha. So in any event, the point is that well, the the main point that I'm bringing from this uh, halacha is that if a person did recite, if a person is reciting the after blessing for the seven species, it does exempt the uh, it does exempt any other fruits that a person eats in the same in the same sitting. Okay, so, uh, so that uh, clarifies a few things. Now. Coming back to the Gemara. So let's go over the Gemara that we learned. So we have an argument here between Rabbi Yehud and the rabbis. Chaviv versus Shiva Saminim. Cherish versus the seven species. And uh, Ula says that if, they, uh, if you're, if you're uh, uh, going to be reciting a bracha anyway, then everyone agrees that we discussed that, that there are different opinions, what that means. What does it mean? Everyone agrees. If you are going to be reciting a bracha anyway. And this, the example would be a case of radishes and an olive. So your, what would be the halacha in such a case, if you have a radish and an olive, so the olive is from the seven species, but the radish you like better. So what everyone agrees in this case, according to Ula, everyone agrees. Question is, what do they all agree to? Do they all agree that like the rabbis or does everyone agree that it doesn't matter? It's uh, or does everyone agree you follow the seven species? But the, the, the main point is that um, at least the way we learned in Rashi, the way we understood Rashi was that, um, and the way, the way we see in Taisvist is that uh, you follow the rabbis. The rabbi's opinion would, would be, uh, in other words, you go by Chaviv, what's more cherished. That's the main, that's the, uh, the main point. Now, um, we did discuss the fact that you did eat a... Um, you did eat a radish and you said a bari priha dhamma. So are you really meant 
to recite a Bari Priha 8 afterwards. And that was a big discussion in Rashi. Rashi brought the whole, uh, uh, Rashi normally is not as long, but here he brings this question and answer. He says, uh, didn't we learn before that if you recite a Bari Pri uh, Ha'adama, you exempt the Bari Pri Ha'ait. So if you recite a bracha on the radish, it should exempt the olive. And we said in Rashi, the Rashi gives an answer. Rashi's answer is that uh, it only exempts it if you don't have any vegetable. But if, in other words, you only have the fruit. So it shouldn't go in vain, so it exempts it. But if you have a vegetable and you recited the Bari on the vegetable, there we don't say that it exempts the um that it exempts the the uh the bari pri eight again if a person made a mistake and he recited bari pri adama on a eight he recited the vegetable bracha on a on a fruit of a tree that would work but if he recites but if the, he's eating a vegetable also he's reciting it on both then it does then you, we don't say that it exempts he's reciting the bracha bari pri adama also, on the fruit, we don't say that it, that it works over there. Now, th that's Rashi's explanation. There is another explanation that doesn't take it as extreme as Rashi and says that it actually would work if you had in mind. If you did have in mind for the, uh, to exempt it, then it would exempt it. But if you don't have it in mind, it won't exempt it. So it depends on what a person's kavana is. If he has in mind to, again, Rashi seems to learn that it doesn't matter what you have in mind, you're, it's not going to be exempted. But the other opinion, Rabbeinu Yoyna learns that if you have it in mind, it would work. So again, it's different ways of answering this question that Rashi is asking. There are two ways of answering it. Does, does the reason why our Gemara say you need to recite two brachas, is it because you really do need to recite two brachas, as Rashi learned? Or is it because you didn't have in mind the other thing, and, and this is the appropriate thing to recite two brachas and not have the other thing in mind? But if you did have the other fruit in mind, your ha'adama would actually exempt a ha'i. So this is actually brought in Shulchan Aruch, these two views. And um, if, we, uh, open, if I open up again that... Um, the Seder Berchas Hanenen over here. Can I ask something real quick? Yeah, sure. I, uh, what I see is if you're eating fruit and you're saying Priya Dhamma, but you didn't plan on eating vegetables, but then later on you decide that you want to eat some vegetables too, then you have to say a second blessing. Is that how it works? So, just one second. One second. Uh, okay. For some reason I don't. Okay, now I see it. Um, you want to know if, if you change your mind that if you if you have wait what bracha did you recite? You recite Adama and you're eating fruit. So and then you decide it's not enough and then you take some vegetables too. Ah, so you made a mistake uh, and you recited <laughs> a. a, a <laughs> Um, uh, the problem is you didn't have in mind for that bracha to go right. on, 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 on the other. So you're, you're, you're bringing new produce. So it's not so simple. You probably would need to recite another bracha. The, 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 there is a, there I, is a bracha, Adama. I know, I understand, the, but, okay. uh, it, it depends really. See, there, there, there is a concept if you, if, if you, even if it's not in front of you, um, if it's the same species, then it exempts it. If you want more, let's say. But here you're talking about something else. So I don't, I don't think it would cover it. So you would end up okay. making two hard hummus. You would end up reciting yeah. two hard hummus. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. Um, So I'm just going to pull up over here the um, the case in Shulchan Aruch where it talks about Ha'it. Um, 
Okay, if a person had vegetables and fruits, and he first recited Bari Priha Dhamma for the vegetable, he has to go back and recite a Bari Priha 8 because it's not exempted with the Ha Dhamma. Only if he recited the Bracha on the fruit, Ha Dhamma, but not if he recites the Bracha Ha Dhamma on a vegetable. When does this apply if he recited a bracha stam, regular without any intention to include the fruit? But if he has in mind to include the fruit with the bracha he's reciting on the vegetable, he has fulfilled his obligation. And even the fruit is not in front of him when he recited it, but he had it in mind. And they brought it afterwards. Since he has it in mind, he's going to eat that. So even though it's not, it's not right in front of him, it's fine. He has fulfilled his obligation of ha'at on the fruit, even though he didn't recite a ha'at, he recited a ha'adama. And this is the opinion that argues with Rashi. This is the Rabino Yoyna's view that we just learned. And this is brought here in the state of Rechot And right afterwards, the Alter Rebbe says, and some argue on this. Who's that going to be? Rashi. And what does Rashi hold? And they hold, even if you have in mind, to exempt the fruit with the ho'adama, with the, with the bracha for vegetables, and even the fruit in front of you, and you have it in mind, you haven't fulfilled your obligation, you would have to go and re- recite a boye pri in the only time we say that if you say Bari Prihadama on a fruit that you fulfill it is when it, when when there is no way to recite the bracha again because it'll be a bracha labatala. Your first bracha will be a bracha in vain. Meaning if you don't have a vegetable to eat with that hoadama, so then your bracha hoadama on the fruit say another bracha. So therefore, we say your hadama exempts you. But if you, your bracha is not going to go in vain because you recited hadama on a radish, then the ha'at will be needed. And there's, there's no, it's not a bracha, there's no bracha, there's no bracha in vain if you have to repeat, a, if you have to say your ha'at now. And therefore, even if you have in mind to exempt the fruit with your hadama, it will not work. It will not exempt it because your ha'adama has a, a radish that is being fulfilled, that, it, that the bracha is falling upon, is, being fulfilled, is being used for. And therefore, you would need to recite a ha'at. So again, these are the two opinions, and this is brought Rabbi, in the... Yeah. Rabbi, according to Rabbi Yona, the first one, yeah. if you're yeah. holding on to an orange... You have a whole bunch of things right. in front of you. You pick up the orange, yeah. you look at it, and you make a bari pri dhamma. You have been yotze because you're holding it, you're looking at it, you're not making the bracha on another vegetable, you're making the bracha on the object you're holding, which happens to be a fruit, but you're made an adama. You should be okay. According to Rashi, even then, it's not okay. 
Huh. Well, it's in front of you. What is your intent? You're you holding it, not just in front of you. You're holding it, you're unpeeling it while you're making the bra. Yeah, the problem I'm having uh, is you're your hand. According to the first opinion you said, you would be outside. According to the second opinion you said, you would not be outside unless I don't know how you would make a brachal batola out of it, but that's basically it. So in your case, you're you're adding one point. You're adding the fact that you're holding one of them. Yes. But I don't know if that makes a difference to it. So let's assume it doesn't make a difference, whether you're holding this one or holding that. According to Rabbeinu Yoyna, you're having in mind to eat everything in front of you. And therefore, your bracha, but it, well, you're having in mind to eat everything in front of you. Uh, according to Rabbeinu Yoyna, you fulfill, you, it's fine. You, you had in mind for the ha'it, that's great. According to Rashi, you had in mind everything in front of you. So it includes the ha'adama items, food items. And uh, the ha'et uh, will not be exempted, correct? You will not be exempt with, you will have to recite another bracha ha'et in order to uh, fulfill that, um, in order to fulfill that obligation of uh, ha'et on that, because your bracha falls upon the ha'adamas that are in front of you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Now, the, the only thing I will say is, that um, that uh, uh, it, it is interesting because when you talk about holding one of the fruits, that takes us back to another discussion that we mentioned from the Jerusalem Talmud. And that is that if you're holding a, a fruit in your hand, reciting a bracha on it, and it falls from your hand. So even though there's other fruits in front of you, but the way it works is the bracha really goes on that fruit that you're that you're holding, and you would need to recite another bracha according to the simple reading of the Yushalmi. Again, there's many commentaries discuss this Yushalmi, and Christus himself. Uh, uh, brings it, and he says, maybe that's why you're supposed to cut the, you're supposed to hold the whole challah, but not cut the cut the challah, so that your, if in case the piece falls, you will won't have to recite another bracha because your bracha is on the whole thing that you're holding. So if you want to take that idea and bring it here, that view, and you connect that view with Rashi, and then you're going to give me your case where you recited the bracha ho'adama on a fruit that you're holding even though there's other vegetables there that are in front of you. So now what you've done is you've really created a complicated question for me because what you've done is you've, you've brought that earlier Gemara. And again, there's discussion about that, but let's say the simple reading of that Yushalmi, uh, which basically teaches us that the bracha is really only falling upon, it's really only uh, uh, applying to the fruit that you're holding, and everything else is sort of like dragged along, but the fruit that you're holding is really what the bracha is upon. So here the question would be, and this is a very hard question for me, I'm not really sure what to answer. According to Rashi, um, if you, you're holding the fruit, so the bracha really falls upon that, that fruit, the hadama. So can we say that it's not a bracha lebatala because there's other fruits that are gonna, there's other vegetables that will be, that, that will be dragged along. And therefore, you said the ha'at, you said the ha'adama on, um, on all of them, but you really had in mind the fruit first. So can we say that you have to recite another ha'at on the fruit because really it includes the vegetables there as well? Or do we say no? It only, it only uh, is, is directly on the fruit. And the fruit is where you said the ha'adama. And if we don't let you eat that fruit with this bracha ha'adama, the bracha ha'adama is going to be levatala. I guess that would be the, I guess that would be the answer. Because just like if it falls from your hand, we don't say you can go and eat another piece of, uh, of orange if you're holding one piece of orange and that piece falls from your hand. So we don't say go eat another piece. That is a bracha. That, that we, 
we tell you you got to repeat the bracha. So I guess the same thing would apply according to that view in Rashi. So a- according to this, according to Rashi, you would also seem to fulfill your obligation. Isaac, do you hear what I'm telling you? That Rabbeinu Yoyne and Rashi might agree in your scenario. Yes, yes. I was you know, asking. The reason right? I'm saying now, the, now it's not as it's not so simple because. <laughs> there's an opinion of the Machaber, the Ramah, the, the Achreinim, all the commentaries discuss this Yerushalmi. We, we, just, we talked about it before, and there's a lot of discussion, like, well, you had in mind, it, 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 since you had in mind everything, it should be that you were yoik, you fulfilled your obligation. So uh, I, I can't say that Rashi would definitely hold this way, but if you want to combine those two opinions, then in your scenario where you're holding the orange and you said a ho'adama on that orange, uh, you would fulfill your obligation if you want to follow that, you know, that understanding of the Yerushalmi and, and say that that's the halacha and, and so on. So it would seem that Rashi and Rabbi Yoni would agree. But uh, otherwise, if you don't want to follow that and you follow the other understandings, the other uh, if, uh, that uh, since you had in mind, your bracha goes on everything and so on. Uh, therefore, um, in that case, your bracha is fall is going to, fulfill itself on the radishes that are in front of you and the other vegetables that are in front of you and you would need to recite a new ha'it on the apple on the orange okay so that uh, that clarifies so so that's these two these two uh explanations in our gemara find themselves in in shulchan aruch so when you learn the shulchan aruch you find you actually know ah this is rashi and ah that's the rabbeinu yoyna okay so that's the uh that uh, touches on this discussion of if her eight exempts, if her dhamma exempts her eight, if you have in mind, or it only exempts it if there's nothing else, if there's no other vegetable there. Now, um, the next discussion uh, that the next thing that has to be mentioned is the question over here that. The, the Gemara says that in the case of radishes and olives, it seems that uh, well, the, the conclude. Let, 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 let me tell. Let me say outside first the Gemara, and then we'll 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 talk about this. So the Gemara said that we have a brisa that seems to say that if you have a radish and an olive, uh, you only recite the bracha on the radish. And uh, why is uh, Ula saying that you would recite two brachas? And the Gemara explains, no, the case is talking about that the radish is the, is the ichor, is the main thing, and the olive is only to blunt the sharpness of the radish. And uh, therefore, you don't recite a bracha. In this scenario, it's unique. It's a, it's, a, it's a unique scenario. But in a regular case where you have a radish and an olive, where you're not eating one to just blunt the other uh, sharpness, you're actually eating them because you enjoy them. So in these scenarios, um, the, uh, the, you would say two brachas. Okay. Now, the Gemara is not satisfied with that because it says, what about Rabbi Yehuda? Rabbi Yehuda says you recite the bracha on the olive. And how could you recite? If the case is that it's talking about that the olive is only there to blunt the, the sharpness of the radish, so why would Rabbi Yehuda argue and say you actually recite the bracha on the olive because it's from the seven species? Doesn't Rabbi Yehuda hold, does Rabbi Yehuda not hold of the concept of primary and secondary does he not follow that that uh, that uh, that law that's a famous law that there's the ichor and a tuffle a primary and a secondary thing and and here the the ol- the olive is not eaten for the purpose of eating it's only eaten to to blunt the flavor of the of the radish and therefore it would seem uh, that's a that's a famous rule so why is Rabbi Yehuda arguing it must be that this is not the case so and the Gemara says maybe Rabbi Huda doesn't hold of this main this law of ikur and tuffel of primary and secondary. The Gemara says no, we have a brisa that says he does hold of it because he says if the olive um, is only coming uh, to blunt the flavor of the radish, he clearly says this law that the, you 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 only recite one bracha, the bracha on the on the radish. So the Gemara is trying to figure out then this brisa. So then what is the case of the brisa? Where uh, Rabbi Yehuda says that you recite the bracha on, I'm sorry, where uh, where the the initial opinion is you recite the bracha on the radish, 
the, the, the general opinion, the, 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 the Tanakama of the Brisa, the first opinion of the Brisa, you recite the bracha on the radish, and that's it. So what, how are we explaining that? How does that fit with Ula, who implied that you have to recite two brachas? So the Gemara answer is that you have to edit, re-edit the Brisa. That's what we learned yesterday, that uh, and it adds a little paragraph, a little qualification. And what we, what we explained was as follows. Um, This is how you read it. And uh, the, the case is as follows. There was in front of you a radish and an olive. You recite the bracha on the radish. You exe it exempts the olive. And that applies when the radish is the main, the main food and the olive is only uh, there to blunt the sharpness of the radish. But if the radish is not the main food, Everyone agrees you recite the bracha on this one, and then you recite the bracha on that one. And when there's two types in general that their brachas are equal, whenever you have two, um, two types that it's the same bracha, here you recite the bracha on whichever one you want, according to the rabbis. And Rabbi Huda says you recite the bracha on the olive, because the olive is from the seven species. Okay, so what comes out is that this brisa fits with Ula, because the brisa is talking about, where it mentions the argument, it only talks about the, the case of the same bracha. The question is what, what to recite the bracha on, and exempt the other food item. And you're reciting the bracha on... Uh, either the seven species, Rabbi Yehuda says, and then that will exempt the other, uh, say, the, 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 the other bracha, whatever is, uh, is needed. Um, in other words, it, it exempts, that bracha exempts the other food item. And uh, the rabbis would say, you recite the bracha on, um, on uh, you recite the bracha on whichever one you cherish. So it's, the Chaviv. So this is the way Ula, you know, this is basically what Ula said, that when it's the same, when it's the same bracha, that's where they argue, where it's different brachas, uh, then everyone seems to agree that you recite one bracha and then another bracha. Now that was the Gemara. Now, what comes out uh, from here uh, is that it's unclear which one do you recite the bracha on when they both agree, Rabbi Yehuda and the rabbis, when it's two separate brachas, which one should you do first? Does it matter? Does it not matter? So we mentioned that there's different opinions in the commentaries. Uh, the um, the, the, the Titus mentioned that you go by majority, so we'll follow the chaviv, what you cherish more. Um, there are, there is the, the other view would say it doesn't matter. You can recite any of them. Then there, there's the, the other option is maybe everyone agrees to Reb Yehuda that you follow the Chaviv, what you, you follow the seven species. So there's different opinions in the, in the, uh, as it develops in the commentaries, what, because it left it vague. The Gemara leaves it, the Gemara leaves it vague. But my question is, I'm not my question, it's really mentioned in the commentaries, but what I'd like to present here is the question of, so if you recite uh, the bracha koadama first, because you, you enjoy the vegetable, isn't that problematic? Because doesn't ha'etz come before ho'adama? Isn't the blessing of ha'etz more specified because you're giving exact specifications where this grew from. It grew from a tree rather than Hoadama, which is more generic. It grew from the ground. In other words, you're specifying the, uh, the, 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 the fruit. It, we mentioned that there is a benefit, that there is a um, priority to specifying a bracha that's 
more specified comes first. And it would seem that the Ha'etz Bracha is giving a little more specification than the Ha'adama. Because a lot of things grow from the ground. Uh, the growing from the ground is more general, a g- general thing. A lot of things grow. But the, 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 when you say Ha'etz, it actually grew on a tree from the ground. You're, you're giving a little more specification of where it grew. And, um, and therefore, because the Bracha emphasizes the tree, it would seem that you're specifying it more, and you would think that Ha'et maybe should come before Ha'adama. And why is our Gemara not dealing with that? Instead, it seems to just leave it up to you. Chaviv, whatever you like, you can recite the Bracha on first. You don't have to recite the Ha'et before the Ha'adama. No, whatever you'd like, you recite first. Recite first. What do you mean? Didn't we learn? And let, let me remind you where we learned this. We learned this when we had that story of the rabbi and his two students and the two students. And uh, the rabbi rebuked the, both of the students. And one of the students read, recited the bracha on the pargiot instead of um, instead of on it was pargiot. I'm trying to remember. The other food was Damaskin or Damascus. Oh, oh, Adama. What was plums, the fruit? Plums from Damascus. No, it was shlakais. That's what it was. It was oh, cooked shlakais? vegetables. Right. It was it was shlakais. That's what it was. Shlakais are uh, uh, the brachas Adama. And the student recited the bracha on the pargiot, the shahakal. Pargiot is the type of chicken or type of bird meat. And uh, he, uh, he recited the bracha on that instead of on the shlakos, on the cooked vegetable. And what one of the understandings of that Gemara, the Gemara was a little ambiguous, but one of the understandings was that he recited the bracha on the Pargiot on this chicken because he hadn't had chicken in a long time. But, and he thought that either, uh, he also thought that um, uh, the shlakais would be shahakal. Cooked vegetables lo- ruin, cooking it maybe ruins the, uh, the bracha ha'adama from it and it would become shahakal and therefore they would be the same bracha. And therefore you would recite the whatever you like better because it's the same bracha and uh, you know you might as well just recite the bracha on, on the on the pargiot and the other students argued with him and said that what do you mean you're supposed to recite the bracha on the ha'adama first because he said the bracha ha'adama on shlossi cooked vegetables and the, the rabbi was angry at both because the rabbi was angry why didn't they ask me first and why, why didn't they why would they uh not, you know, disrespectful to, with this is not, not giving me the, the honor of asking me of what the appropriate thing to do is. And therefore, why don't, you know, so ultimately, yes, the, the, the understanding <laughs> over there was that Ho'adama comes before Shahakal. Why does Ho'adama come before Shahakal? Because you're supposed to recite the bracha on the more specified food before you recite it on a generic bracha. In the bracha of Ho'adama, specifying this is fruit that comes from the ground. In the bracha Shahakal, just says, well, Hashem created it with his word. It doesn't say where it grew. It doesn't specify. It's not, it's not unique to vegetables. It's not a, it's not a uh, uh, specific bracha. And we saw over there that, there's, that, that, that that's the appropriate thing. In fact, Taishvis brought it that, that that's the appropriate thing to do is to recite a bracha on the more specified uh, more specified food. So here also the question is, wouldn't Ha'et come first before Ho'adama? May I answer? You have two questions. May I answer? If you want. Well, I thought that we had learned, whatever, last week or a couple of days ago, that it also came down to the concept of Kavana. And if the if the preferred, if the Ho'ed something was something you would say the bracha with a lot more kavana, that's really what you want to eat, that that trumps the concept of the other priorities of seven, seven species and, and the more specificity. 
So Chaviv is important. There is a concept of eating what's, what's more cherished. And you want to say maybe that overrides a specific bracha versus a generic bracha. But we had However, said the idea of kavana, when, that you say it with more kavana when you, it's the, what you right. really want to eat. Yes, that, that is a good, good point. So you, you, something that you cherish, you generally have more kavana for. And that's why the rabbis uh, say that in a case of, even if it's against the, you have two foods, one is the seven species, we say, no, ch choose which one you're going to have more kavana. In other words, which one you cherish more, which one you'll have more kavana. And so cherishing does override the seven species. Now, you want to say maybe that should override a, that a generic bracha should override a specific bracha if you cherish it more. And that's a good thought, but let's take that into the scenario that we had earlier with this story. What was the story there that one of the students hadn't had pargiot in a long time and he really wanted those pargiot. He wanted that chicken. He really wanted that. He was, he was, he was excited over it. So that would be a case of chaviv. And yet we see that that was considered inappropriate for him to recite the bracha on the chaviv because the other bracha is more specified. So what we see here is that when it comes to Chaviv against Shiva Taminim, against the seven species, then you see that the Chaviv goes first over the, the Chaviv, according to the rabbis, overrides the seven species. But when it comes to Chaviv cherished versus a generic bracha or a, um, versus a, gen or a specific bracha, we see that a specific bracha overrides Chaviv. There's another so, part of that story, however, which was that he overlooked or dishonored the rabbi because he was supposed to ask the rabbi first. So that kind of threw another element into it. Okay, that that is that is one that is uh, uh, definitely it was it was ambiguous how how you learn it, but there there is a tisus that seems to learn it. This the tisus over there seems to learn it this way, and according to that, which is the source, which seems to be the source or one of the sources of a uh, specific bracha is supposed to override a generic bracha. In other words, where do we know that you're supposed to recite ha'et or adama, mezaynas, over shahakal? In other words, that you first recite the mezaynas is in order to brachas. Uh, that would be one of the sources. Uh, and uh, according to that understanding, that you know, it, it flows with that, with that story. But um, yeah, yeah, there are other ways of learning. It wasn't so clear if ever, you know, how the other kind, there were other commentaries to, who, you know, had different explanations of what the, what the, uh, what the story was there. But uh, if we want to follow what Tysus over there says, this is the way he learned it. And according to that the logic, the question would be, what would be in our scenario of Ha'it versus Ho'adama? Um, what, how does that fit with our Gemara here? So, uh, the the uh, Tysus over here asked this question, and Tysus over here answers that Bayre Priya eight versus Bayre Priya Dama is not really called. One of them is not really generic, and the other specific. They're both considered specific brachas. One might be slightly more specified, but it doesn't really have a importance. It doesn't necessarily override the other one. Against a shahakal, yes, it would override it. And we would not tell you to recite the bracha on the chaviv, that's shahakal, first, instead of the bari pri eight or bari pri adama. No, we wouldn't do that. Chaviv would not override override a shahakal. Override, you know, shahakal would not override a ha'it or ha'adama if it's chaviv. A shahakal would not override ha'it or ha'adama if it's chaviv, because the fact is, it is a very generic bracha. But between ha'it and ha'adama, over there, we don't say that one is more chaviv than the other. At least the way, you know, this is, this is, this Gemara is following Ula's interpretation. Now there is going to be another interpretation, another discussion, and that interpretation actually might come out different. And according to that, that you might 
you might actually um, you might actually uh, come out with a different conclusion and say Ha'ed does override Ha'adama. Um, but at least according to the Gemara here, uh, in, in, the, in the opinion of the way Ula is explaining this Mishnah, uh, it would come out that Ha'ed and Ha'adama, neither of them really override the other. And, um, and uh, it, it, it's interesting because the Bahag, the Baal Halachis Kedolis, which is a famous Halachic, early Halachic Sefer, he writes that Bari Priya 8 does come before Bari Priya Adama because it's more specified, and he bases it on the later Gemara, uh, the, the later opinion, not on this, not on this opinion. Um, but uh, according to this opinion in the Gemara, you have to understand that. Um, uh, that Ha'it and Ha'adama would not be, one would not override the other one. Um, so Rabbi, that's the, uh, another question on this, though. So it's interesting yeah, because... One second, one talking... second. Simone, please stop. Simone, other people had a few questions. I just want to give them a little uh, reply to them. So I think Ezra had a question. Ezra, did you want to say something? No, I, um, I think... Susan no. had okay. a question, but I don't know if she's still on. Okay. Susan, are you on? Did you want to ask something? I was going to say or ask you is uh, how can you say a, a fruit from a tree is more important than a vegetable? Because it can be garlic. Yeah, we're not Go saying ahead. that the fruit is more important. It's not, we're not saying the fruit is more important than the vegetable. We're saying the bracha is a little more specified in the the fruit bracha than the vegetable bracha because the fruit bracha gives a it it, it 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 emphasizes the fact that the fruit came directly from this from the tree so it gives a little more specification than a ho'adama bracha which means something grew from the ground so it's it it has slightly uh, uh more it is more important or it's not more important so because it's so slight, uh, there are different opinions if it's more important or not. And would it come for, if it would come first? In other words, if you have an apple and you have a piece of celery, which one would you recite the bracha on first? Do you have to recite the bracha on the ha'it first, uh, the apple first, and then afterwards recite the bracha on the celery? Or could you have the celery first and then the apple? And that would seem to be... Uh, Based on this, if you, you know, according to the, the way the Gemara is saying it, the first Gemara would seem it doesn't matter. Our Gemara that we learned okay. would, would have, doesn't matter. You could recite the bracha on, on either one first. Uh, the Gemara later, uh, you might be able to conclude from there. And one of the opinions says that that you do you should recite. So nowadays, should a person recite the Ha'at first? There is one opinion that says that, but it's not so necessarily so that you have to follow that. Okay. okay, one more question about yeah. a wine and grape juice. Uh, yeah. When you can't drink wine on Friday night yeah. and you use grape juice, it's still more pre <laughs> Uh It's a good question. I don't know how it applies here, but um, the, 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 the common opinion is that it's Hagafen. There is discussion about it because the grape juice, we've, we've mentioned that the grape juice of today they, they ruin the grape juice to make it that it can't ferment, which, which makes it problematic. But the common understanding is that it's Hagafen. And, uh, and you can recite oh, a Hagafen yeah. on grape juice. Okay. But Thank there you. is discussion. About it. There is a lot of discussion about it. If you have grape juice made from crushed grapes that you crush yourself and don't add any chemicals or anything else to it, then for sure it's Hagafen, yes. But uh, even the grape juice that you buy in the store, the common... Uh, opinion is that it's Hagafen, but it is uh, it is something debated. Um, yes, uh, the, let's see. I think um, someone had a question. Ben, didn't you have? Didn't you want to say something, Ben? No. Okay, Simone, your turn then. Simone. Thank you. So I was going to say, it's sort of interesting because Shahako covers meat, chicken, fish, eggs, cheese, 
These are all the things that we think of as the main course in the meal, the protein of the meal, that if you're sitting down to have a meal, you have one or several of these things. And yet we're saying that anything else with it um, has the priority in the brachas beforehand, before the meat, before the chicken, before the fish, before the eggs, before the cheese. And in a way, it may be a cultural thing. I'm not sure. It seems sort of counterintuitive. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that is interesting that the, uh, the protein, I mean, I don't know that protein is more important. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, w I would think that every, you know, there's, there's, there's numerous uh, uh, nutritious value to, uh, to, to, you know, to, to, to the other, uh, uh, you know, minerals and vitamins and other stuff in the, in the food, not just the protein. But uh, it is interesting that the, the proteins all get the shahakal. That, that, that is an interesting point. And the um, only way you wouldn't be eating those things would be if you were a vegan, which is pretty much considered a kind of a niche dietary uh, arrangement. Right. Anyway, uh, it's something to think about. We'll have to, to be, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to uh, keep that in, in our mind and see, uh, see if we uh, come to uh, understanding why that is. That what that's other small... What, like a, I guess this is a dictal question. I'm not sure. Is there a difference between Hagafen and Hagefen? Oh, well, I, I think the, uh, the Sephardic and Ashkenazic pronounce it differently, if I'm not mistaken. I think Sephardic people pr pronounce it very pre Hagefen. Am I right, uh, Ezra? Doesn't it make a difference if it's at the end of the Pasuk? If it's yeah, in the in middle, it, no. Of the in Hebrew, it's yes. Geffen. If it's at the end of the pasuk, or even sometimes at an snachta, then it's hagafen. No, I'm saying she's saying in the bracha that we recite very pre hagafen or very pre hagafen. Yeah, you know, okay. you're, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're explaining the source of it of it. But I think the I think Spartic people recite. Am I right, Ezra? Hagafen. Hagafen. Very pre hagafen. In Israel, yeah, so it's uh-huh. Is Israeli say Bari Pri Hagefen, like for yeah. Yiddish? Uh, yeah. uh -huh. But uh, Hagefen uh, is more correct. Is that what we're saying? Hagefen is more correct? Uh, I, I didn't say that. I wouldn't say that. You have the whole Ashkenazic Jews that are going to be uh, <laughs> knocking on your door soon. <laughs> be careful. Uh, Just go I according to your minhag. Rabbi, don't worry. We're not going to revolt or rebuke you. Know, you. <laughs> <laughs> Just go according to your minhag. That's all. Ezra, Ezra said it right. You have to follow your minimum. Thank you. But but um, what what Isaac said is also correct. That that the the, the actual word uh, 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 changes when it's when it's at the end of a when it's at the end of a uh, uh, sentence. You. So it, you generally have the the uh, the comment comes <laughs> over. Now, how that fits within a bracha and how there's an argument between Ashkenazic and Spartak, I'm not sure. But um, but that's the uh, that's the general uh, like the, like for example in the in the in the davening mashif haruach umerid hageshem or umerid hagoshem and it's based on is that the end of the sentence or not if that's the end of the sentence or partial sentence it would be hagafen if it's a continuation it's mashif haruach umerid hageshem. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so that's the uh, just a little dictum. Um, now I, about your other question, I'm not sure. But you know, you mentioned about the um, uh, the uh, uh, protein, and uh, but I'm, I'm thinking that the the protein uh, might might have to do with, kabbalistically with uh, elevating different uh, different uh, uh, d different elements, different uh, forms of life. So by by reciting a bracha on the um, the fruits and vegetables, maybe those are easier to elevate. But when you're reciting the bracha on the on the um, protein, which is meat, chicken, uh, um, uh, fish, so you're you're elevating um, animal your products. maybe harder <laughs> animal products. Maybe you're harder to, to elevate. Maybe there's some. Maybe you have to first reach out. You have to like uh, you know uh, you first recite other stuff first to get in the mode or or you do it in a certain pattern that you're going from from the, the easiest to the hardest, or I don't know, I'm just throwing a thought there. I guess we would have to ask our uh, 
um, Kabbalistic uh, people. We don't, I don't know if we have anyone here. David, maybe Hasidic uh, scholars. Yeah, what about water? And, There's no um, protein in water. Right, right. Well, that's I, the mainstay you know, of life. I don't know. I'm just uh, throwing a thought there that uh, that they that they come that they come last. But uh, okay, well we'll have to we'll have to think about it. Um, let's see. We have uh, three minutes left over here. So. The Pligi Ba, let, let's start in the, the just to do a few lines here. Pligi Ba, we're exactly in the middle of the page, maybe about 25 lines from the top. Excuse Rabbi, me, a, Rabbi. Oh, oh, a quick question. When you're saying yeah. uh, the, the rabbis say this and, uh, and somebody else says different, are we concluding that the automatic? We saying that the automatic conclusion is that it goes by the majority, so that the rabbis are the correct opinion, and the single person, Rabbi Yehuda, he's automatically going to be wrong because he's the minority. Well, there is reason to learn that way, but that's not the that's that's not uh, necessarily so. It, 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 there is a there is a view that says that here. That the Gemara doesn't clarify who the halacha follows uh, in, within Ula's statement, and uh, Ula leaves it vague. And the reason he leaves it vague is because it's pretty obvious that you're going to uh, follow the rabbis, but um, because it's the majority. So, like, he didn't have to specify. You know, it's, it's pretty obvious you go by the majority. But uh, not everyone uh, learns that way. It could be that it doesn't matter. You you could do whatever you you want. Um, there, there's no, there's no, it's like, there's no need to go to, to put any of them first. So, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily, uh, uh, mean that the, the, uh, you have to understand also that if the, it could be that the, the, um, like the rabbi's view is in a different case. So it's not like we're going to say, oh, we're not following the rabbis here. It, the rabbis talked about a case that's different. You know, the rabbis spoke about a case that, that was um, where the bracha is the same. And the question is, which one do you actually recite the bracha on and, um, and have in mind and exempt the other food? In this case, it's not really the case of the rabbis. So it's not like we're saying, oh, we're not going to follow the rabbis. It's just the fact that the Gemara left it vague. There's reason to say that maybe because the rabbi's view in the other case maybe applies here, and that would be the assumption. But again, it's not like a, it, it, this is not like a typical, this is not a typical case where you have, oh, the rabbis are arguing with someone. Oh, of course we have to follow the rabbis. You know what I'm saying? This is really a different scenario. It's just that the Gemara leaves this vague and says everyone agrees in this case. So here you have like room for a discussion. Who would the halacha follow? You get what I'm saying? It's a different scenario? Yeah, I understand. Okay. Uh, ben, did you want to say one thing? I wanted to say something quick. I don't know if I'm right or not, but maybe the, the, the meat has to do with, with Noah. We didn't eat meat before the Mabu. We, I think we started eating meat after the Mabu. Right. So, so maybe uh -huh. the importance of it is, is different. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Uh, nice thought. Uh, very, very good. Okay. So uh, there's an argument between Rabami and Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha and Chad um, Omar Machlekes Bishop Berchaisen Shavai. One says the argument is only where their, their uh, blessings are the same. And uh, if the blessings are different, then everyone agrees. Um, uh, and this is the same as Ula's opinion. Um, so again, Rabami and Rabbi Nafcha, one of them is going to agree with everything that Ula said. And the other one is going to say that uh, there's actually an argument, even when the brachas are different, if you recite one, one goes uh, takes precedence over the other, but I'm going to have to stop here. So 
uh, we'll see you later, Mitzvah Shem. Zayg everyone. Zayg everybody. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi.